Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to set up the UI that's going to interact with the DNA eventually. It's going to be the next lesson, in fact, when we start interacting with the data. But in this lesson, we're going to lay out the UI. So we're going to add some sliders that we saw in that uh, the first presentation. That's going to allow us to control some of those DNA attributes that we were just messing with in the last lesson. We're going to add some buttons that allow us to change our hairstyle or to change our skin color and just show you how you can do different things with different, uh, different types of inputs and with a couple different slots and with some different data. Then we're going to create a button that will eventually represent the create character or the save character. Uh, button that will allow us to actually generate the data that we can then load into another scene later on so we can have our character in our game based on the character that we created. It's going to be pretty cool. So in Uma, what I want to do is first of all, let's just do a split view here so we can see the game and the actual scene view here. And I see where my character is going to be standing. And I want him to be standing a bit off to the left so we can have the menu on the right. I'll just drag the camera to the right a bit. Probably something something simple, you know, just like that. If we make this into like a 16 by 9, we can see what it's going to look like on a wide screen, which most things would be. We'll go off to the right a bit more and we'll come in a bit closer maybe. Maybe come up a bit and do a little angle down just a wee bit. Even a little closer, I think. And then just raise it up a bit. And you could put some work into this to get it how you would like, but this looks pretty good to me. So with that, what I want to do now is start creating some UI elements. Now I'm going to first create a simple panel. It's going to allow me to position all my elements where I want them on the canvas. So I'll create a new panel here. And I'm going to hit F or double click on the panel to center it in my frame. In fact, we'll go to the 2D mode so we can do that a little bit easier. And what I want to do is just create a panel. It's going to be off to the right of our character here, just kind of floating out here. You know, the kind of character creation screen that we're going to be creating, the one that you see in most RPGs, something very similar. And I don't want this to be transparent. In fact, I want it to just be a darker color, maybe. Up to you entirely how you want to do this. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to call this Customizer. And inside of this, we're going to kind of section it off. At the top, we're going to have uh, a title that's going to uh, be for the sliders that we're going to have here. Then we're going to have like a hair section that's going to have a few options for hair. And then we're going to have a few options for skin color, which in my case, we're just going to have buttons. But in your case, you could have images that would uh, show you the color that you're going to have if you click on that button. Or maybe just, you know, have colored buttons to show you the kind of skin color you would have. So I'm going to create a UI text element, or we could use Text Mesh Pro here. In fact, let's use Text Mesh Pro because it is a lot better and more efficient than the built-in Unity text. And it comes by default with Unity now. So all you have to do is actually select that and you'll get this window that says you have to import the essentials for Text Mesh Pro to work. So we'll go ahead and do that. It'll just allow us to have crisper, uh, more scalable text in our customizer here. Uh, we're going to set this to be, first of all, I don't need the game view up for this. We're just losing space there. We're going to set this to be, let's make the panel not scale. We're just going to uh, anchor it to the right here because we want it to be a certain size and not cause any issues here. And I'm going to grab this text element. We're just going to drag it to the top left corner. Make it about 20, uh, maybe 20 in size, something like that, maybe 24. And we're just going to drag this up just like that. And I'm going to call this character settings. That's going to be the title for this panel. Look in the game view. And that's what you've got. Pretty cool. Now, if I were to click play, we can kind of see where we stand here. There we go. So we have a guy standing here. Then we're going to have the options for the guy over here. Very cool. So the first thing I want to do, in fact, is I want to make sure that we can organize this nicely uh, so we don't just have elements flying all over the place. So I'm going to add a vertical layout group. It's going to allow us to just kind of cascade our elements down this panel so we don't have to worry about positioning each individual one. We're going to have padding of maybe uh, 10 units all around the panel. 
And then we're going to have spacing between individual elements at about 10 as well. We may change that as we go. So now I want to take and add, if I were to go to UI, I can add text. And if I were to move it, it'll snap into the position that it should be in. Now, I don't like that kind of thing where it's going to be uh, split among the total height of our panel. But the more elements we add, the better it'll be spaced out. So we'll just go with that for now. In fact, we don't want to use regular text. We want to use text mesh pro text. And this is going to be height because we're going to create a height slider for this. And we're going to set this to be about 20 in size. Now, what I would like to do here is I would like to create an empty object inside of this that's going to act as the parent for our individual slider and labels because this is going to be a label uh, pretty much for a slider. So if I were to take this text, add it to that game object, take the uh, text then and make sure that it's positioned inside of that at a position that I like, and then take the game object here and just make it fit inside of our element. The reason we're doing this is because we're going to have a slider and a label together, and we don't want it to look weird whenever we start having it fill out the panel using the vertical layout group. And just to show you how this would work, if I were to create inside of this new empty object a slider, I could position this where I want it inside of this object, but then this object itself will be positioned in the panel according to the layout, which is exactly what we would want. So I can just resize this to make sense and then just drag the slider down. And I would in fact like to start this at 0.5 just to be in the middle so we can see that it does work. Now what I would do is I could just duplicate this and there we go, that's how you would do it, right? So the more I add, the more it fit in there. Now, if you don't like that, what you can do, if you were to come in here and say that we wanted it to not control the size of the height of the elements, what I could do is each individual object that we now have, we could set a height of like 50 units on it and just snap it into place. And each one would have the same height and we'll just have a nice little list of objects. Pretty cool. Uh, maybe that's too large. Uh, not too sure. It's probably fine. So the second slider, we'll use it for muscle. It'll define our muscle attributes. And then our next slider, we will use for weight. In fact, I think we should get rid of some of the spacing here. Make it like five. The next thing I want is a list of options for our hair. It's just gonna be a couple buttons, maybe three buttons that allows us to click on them and change the hair that we're using. Just all basic UI stuff we're doing here. Nothing uh, specific to Uma at all. So I'm gonna create a UI panel inside of this panel. And let's see, where did we go there? We will set the height to be 50 and the width to be whatever the width should be if we were to actually go to customizer uh, child control size of the, for the width there which means we're going to get the full width of the panel no matter the size of the panel which is what we want so now if i were to take this i can say uh maybe make it 75 like that now this is going to have its own layout inside of this panel it's going to allow us to add as many buttons as we want and they will uh lay out nicely in a row so to do that we would use a horizontal layout group just like that and inside of this we could create a button we'll create a, go ahead and create a couple of buttons and we'll just snap them into place but that's all we want we want them to be kind of square so if i were to say uh, 50 or it's actually 75 tall isn't it so we'll do 75 on the height there uh, or we could go to the panel and we could say the child controls width and height, right? So we just have it fit the panel no matter how many buttons that we have. And that allows us to also add some more padding so we can see the edge of the panel and the spacing as well there. So then we could say this is hair A. And then this one is hair B, and then this one is hair C. Just like that, looks pretty good. 
And then we can add another panel below this one. And notice the layout system that we have going on here. It makes it very easy to just add new elements and they just fall in line. It's pretty cool. Uh, this one is going to be skin color. We could add another button, in fact. So we have four options for skin color, just to show you some difference. Uh, and I'll say just one, uh, two, three, and four. And I could add a label above this so we know, hey, this is the skin color. And to do that, all I'd have to do is go to Customizer UI, Text Mesh Pro Text. And in fact, all these buttons are using the built-in Unity text. I would recommend changing those to the Text Mesh Pro. But since we've already done all this, I'm not going to worry about it. But you should go ahead and go through if you plan on using this in a game and uh, making these Text Mesh Pro Text elements inside of the buttons. So I'll just take this and place it above the panel and notice the order in the hierarchy affects the order of the layout. Pretty cool. So I'll just take and resize this, uh, make it 24 so it matches the character settings. No, actually we'll make it match the 20 of our individual labels. That makes more sense. So we'll make it be 20 and then we'll just fit it just like that. And this will say skin color. There we go. So that's going to be our customizer. Now, these are the attributes that I decided to use. Again, there's like a hundred built in attributes that you can individually change and all the wardrobe changes you can make. And you can make any kind of skin colors you would like. I'm just going to choose four random colors for mine. Uh, and you can have tabs of different settings. You know, if you think of like how Skyrim does it or how World of Warcraft would do something similar or a, 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 maybe a more advanced MMO than World of Warcraft. Uh, it's just a lot of possible attributes that you can change using the exact same system we have set up here. But of course, we can't go over everything. That would take us forever. So if we click play now, we can just see what it kind of looks like. Got our dude standing here and we can control these sliders and we can change his hair and the skin color, except we can't yet. We'll be able to do that in the next lesson. But the last thing I want to do in this lesson is I want to add a button UI uh, button. And I'm simply going to place this in the center of the player, at least around the center of the player. I expect him to be like right here. And I'm just going to anchor this to the bottom center. And this button is going to be save character or create character, whatever you'd like. And I'll take the button and I'll change the color of the button to be like a confirm color. So a nice blue and then take the text color and make it white. And in fact, we'll hold down control and shift or sorry, Alt and Shift, and drag our button out to a size that we'd like, and then increase the text size. Again, in yours, you should probably use the Text Mesh Pro here instead of the built-in text, but it is what it is for now. Click Play. And in fact, I want to move the camera over a bit so we kind of line up a bit better with that. So go out of 2D mode, uh, double-click on the camera until we find it here. We'll zoom out a bit, go down a little bit, and then we are going to go over a little bit. That looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more so we line up a bit better. And there we go. So this is going to be the UI that we're going to work with in the next lesson whenever we start hooking up our UI elements to our DNA attributes. My name is Austin and I will see you in the next lesson.